Hey guys, Claire here. In today's video, we're going to talk about the scores surrounding Prince William and how it kind of sort of got related to Prince Harry. Now, of course, there's been a lot of conversations concerning Prince William's decision to not attend the Women's World Cup in Australia. And of course, you know, there are a lot of excuses given. Some saying he works really hard and he was on vacation, which he's entitled to be on. So that's one excuse. I've even heard people saying, you know, well, he's putting fatherhood first by making sure that he spends sufficient time with his kids on their holiday break. Um, some people said that the flight was too long. We've heard excuses concerning it's not environmentally friendly. Um, have you even heard an excuse concerning uh, Prince or now King Charles haven't not visited Australia? So it's not within protocol for William to visit, which of course is nonsense. But there's been a lot of criticisms hurled at William for not going. A lot of people saying that it's incredibly sexist that he didn't go, and if it were the men, he would have gone. So I saw this tweet about the Women's World Cup that I just had to share because I have some thoughts. The tweet reads, Sorry, let me see if I understand this. England is in its first World Cup final in nearly six decades, and neither King Charles, nor Prince William, nor any member of the British royal family, nor Prime Minister Senek are attending. And we're supposed to believe this isn't sexism. So, first off, yes, 100% it's sexism. If the men's English team got to the final, I find it hard to believe that no giant public figures would be attending. But also, it, it does truly shock me, and this is from an American, so we don't have a royal family, but it does always shock me when, like, British people are surprised that these multi-billionaire figureheads don't give a shit about other people. Like, we have billionaires in the U.S., and we all know that they do not give a shit about anything or anyone other than themselves. They don't care. They get to hang out with their stolen jewelry and accumulated wealth and just ride. The monarchy as an institution is also incredibly sexist. That's common knowledge. Just go read the laws of secession until they were very, very recently changed. So yes, the monarchy is sexist and doesn't give a shit about anyone else. That's not news. Which I totally agree with. There are also people who are saying, you know, William is the president. This is within his job description. It is his job to do it. So if he's not willing to do the job, why should he retain that title? And that's the thing with William. I mean, a lot of these titles and jobs and qualifications that he has been given are not things that he's necessarily worked for. To be an heir and a future head of state, the was it president of BAFTA, president of the Football Association. Like, how did he earn any of those titles? He hasn't. And I think that is why William does the things that he does his way or the highway because he knows that essentially it really is his way because he's been handed these things without having to lift a finger without having to earn them and work for them the way the rest of us do with prince william as the president of fa for not attending the football match mm -hmm. is a complete disgrace because in all his tenure as the president of the fa there is no event that he would attend that would be as important mm -hmm. as the women's football reaching the semi-finals. I've not seen it. And for him not going, I think shows complete disrespect. Disrespect so, to so, who? So, to, the, to the lionesses? To the lionesses and to his role as the president of the FA. Do you, do you think reason, he should step he should down, be, sir? Do you think he should he resign? Be, no, resign. He should be sacked then. He should be sacked as president of the FA for not going. Sacked. Yes, because if he was any other bloke or any other woman who was the president of FA, they will definitely be there. Mm. He's not there because he's Prince William. Spain can send its queen and her daughter, who I assume is a princess, and we send the culture secretary, Lucy Fraser. If it was the blokes, you would have everybody there. You'd, ha you'd possibly have the king. You'd certainly have Prince William, who's the chairman of the FA. You'd have the prime minister. You'd probably have Simon Cowell and Stephen Fry. They'd all get out there, but not, it would appear... For the girls. I mean, I even saw Workshy William and Workshy Willie trending on Twitter for like, what, the past two days? So there's been some interesting discourse there. Now, did I think that Harry was going to show up? No. 
because it's not his style, but it is very much William's style. Now, there was a post on Instagram that pretty much summed up my thoughts on the matter as it relates to will Prince Harry be a little bit petty and show up? <laughs> and so I'm going to read it for you guys and let me know what you think. Let's suspend reality and enter an alternate universe. Imagine that Harry, minding his business in California, happened to see the media frenzy stirred up by William's decision not to attend the World Cup final in Australia. Wanting to capitalize on his bad press, imagine that Harry and his team booked a last minute ticket to the match, making sure to be seated predominantly and highly visibly. And post lost, Harry made a point to console the lionesses on the pitch, doing everything that someone in William's position as patron is expected to do. I'm sure he would be blasted in the British press for being opportunistic and media hungry, and William would probably be, yet again, incandescent with rage. Yet, that's exactly what William did to the Sussexes in 2019. When Harry, Meghan, and a newborn Archie were photographed aboard Elton John's private plane while on holiday, they were eaten alive by the tabloids. You accused them of living too lavishly, of snubbing the Queen in Scotland, and being environmental hypocrites. This was made especially difficult due to the launch of Travelist, Harry's sustainable travel initiative, just a few weeks later. It didn't matter that they had heightened security concerns or that they had offset their emissions. William and his team decided to capitalize on their bad press by orchestrating an elaborate trip to Balmoral via a commercial plane and making sure that they were packed while doing so, even having the children carry their own luggage for optics received glowing press for it, despite their usual mode of transportation being private plane and helicopter. That was intentional. And I'm sure that it hurt Harry. William is fortunate that Harry doesn't have such a calculating heart. This right here was all of what I thought about when reading the comments on various social media platforms of people just saying, you know, I wish Harry would be a little bit petty and showed up William in that way. And that's not how Harry rolls. Now, there's a lot of people who say that whenever Harry expresses and talks about his lived experiences, it's an attack on the monarchy, it's an attack on his brother. Say what you want about Harry, whatever he says and does, he does it with his whole chest. William a lot more sneaky about it. This little PR charade, which eventually we found out was <laughs> a PR charade, and the fact that William seems to use people like Jason Knopf and Simon Case to do his bidding, his dirty deeds, take pot shots at Harry and Meghan, and hide his hands behind his back, claiming, well, it's unfair for Harry and Meghan to make these accusations against us because it's not like we can respond. But yeah, you do respond. Not only do you respond, you guys started this mess. Whether it be William using Chase and Knopf to put out really unsavory stories about Harry and Meghan or having Knopf work with the tabloids to give them access to Meghan's personal information in an effort for Megan to lose her case, or Simon Case, who if you have read the book Spare, then you know it is alleged that the fly is Simon Case. <laughs> Simon was very much a part of this entire PR optics with William. Honestly, Harry's description of Simon Case, I feel, is <laughs> spot on because the more I read about this guy yeah he's an unsavory character not only was he involved in this fake PR stunt with William and Kate he was involved in some really unsavory bits with Boris Johnson then he was even accused of some workplace harassment situation so Harry's assessment of him as the fly 
totally tracks. Now, while consuming all of the different content um, from people on social media being pissed off and giving their two cents to mainstream media talking about it, I happened to see a TikTok from someone who had been a royal watcher for a very long time. Now, for me personally, I never paid attention to the Windsors before Meghan, you know? I thought Harry seemed the nicest and most normal of the bunch, but I really wasn't checking for them that way. Of course, until Meghan. But this young lady has been a royal watcher for years, and she made some really interesting points showing that William's decision not to go to this particular match is not something new. It's a bit of a pattern with him. I don't know. If you guys are royal watchers, maybe you already knew this, but I didn't. This weekend, Prince William received a lot of online criticism for not attending the Women's World Cup final match held in Australia, with a lot of the discussion being centered around as the president of the Football Association, this is literally your job to, if this was the Men's World Cup final, he, his dad, his sons, the Prime Minister would probably all be there, to him using Princess Charlotte as a prop. However, I want to take us back in time and show you that this is just Prince William's MO. To a lot of new royal watchers, people who maybe weren't following these people for as long as I have, 2016 was a horrible year for William and Kate. The press deciding that William and Kate were just kind of being a little bit too stingy and they weren't playing the game as well as they used to, decided to go after them. And in 2010, William became the president of the BAFTAs, and he decided to skip the BAFTAs two years in a row. In 2015, he had said that he had had prior commitments, and that's why he couldn't attend, with this Daily Mail piece being particularly cruel, saying, A Kensington Palace spokesman tells me, sadly, the Duke was not able to attend this year due to prior commitments. If anyone knows what those commitments were, please get in touch. And in 2016, Katie Nichol called him William the Unwilling, a no-show at the BAFTAs, only two engagements all year, and now even royal eyebrows are being raised at a prince who's gone missing in action. And the point that I've highlighted is, the Duke of Cambridge declined invitation to attend a BAFTA party at his home. Yes, you read that right. They were hosting a BAFTAs like pre-award show party at Kensington Palace, where Prince William lives, and he still decided he did not want to go. Because what a lot of people don't really remember, like especially if they only really started seriously royal watching uh, with Harry and Meghan, is that the Rhoda actually used to hold these people accountable. The piece by Katie Nichols says, not that this should have caused any great surprise because William has a form of going missing in action. Prince Charles is hoping his own sense of duty and workaholic view of life in time would rub off a little. One friend of the royal family referred to William as radiating a sense of entitlement and petulance, while also describing Kate as a little grand and occasionally abrupt. And I plan on making a further video about this next point later, um, but the source added, they have surrounded themselves with people who say yes to everything, so they, William and Kate, get no proper advice. Towards the end of the article, it says, according to one family member, when it comes to William and what he wants to do, it's William's way or no way. So in 2017, there started to be a lot of whispers of a story regarding the BAFTAs and whether Will and Kate would or would not be going. So in January, The Sun released this article written by a collab that nobody asked for, Dan Wooten and Emily Andrews, that BAFTA bosses were worried Kate would outshine the A-list celebrities, which might be a reason that they won't go. With the BAFTAs being very quick to shut down those rumors, saying that they would always welcome them any year that they are able to attend. Before Meghan entered the royal family, before they had their bad guy in her, um, a lot of the chatter around William, besides the fact that he was a little bit lazy, work try willy, um, was that he was stubborn uh, and that he would often not do anything if he did not want to. Oi vey, imagine my surprise when I saw this freaking headline. Ugh. And it leads me to believe that William's 
behavior now and his disinterest to read the room and just do what he's supposed to do as president of that association is going to be something that we're going to be seeing for years to come. This is the sort of king that the UK and people of the Commonwealth should get ready to embrace because as far as we see, William does what William wants to do. It's his way or the high. So our former president, Barack Obama, tweeted out congratulating the Lionesses of Spain for winning the World Cup. The ladies did a phenomenal job and they deserve that win. But that's not why we're here. <laughs> man, I am here to tell you that this man is being drugged for filth over there on the X app. And rightfully so, because he is the president of the FA and he decided not to attend. And why, you might ask? Well, according to palace sources, he was concerned about his carbon footprint and the diplomatic ramifications of going to Australia. What a weenie. It was because you were on holiday. That's it. And oh my God, poor Willie is out here in these streets saying, I don't know what you've been chewing on me, but I know I'm ate up. You're being ate up because of this, Willie. This person tweets our ex is I don't know what the hell it is nowadays. This sorry A has been using women to clean up his pathetic life his entire life. He said his mother was paranoid, breached Megan's privacy, publicly humiliates his wife on a daily, then uses his daughter as a prop to soften the backlash he's been receiving. Like his father, he's used to having women under his control. Oh, but he wasn't able to do that with our girl Megan. She put his ass in his place quick, fast, and in a hurry. And then people started saying ish like, Harry should go. Excuse me, what the Now when it came to the monarchy, Harry was the black sheep and the scapegoat his entire life. So please leave him out of this because he is no longer Captain Say. I mean, come on, in Willie the Future King, he is more than capable of cleaning up his own damn mess. Family meeting. Okay, let's have a conversation about William because he has not had a great weekend. The main issue is this. He is not only the heir apparent to uh, Great Britain, but he is also the president of the, of the country's football league. And he was not present when the women lionesses were playing in the World Cup. The question is, would he, he have attended or more cert most certainly he would have attended had the footballers been men, right? So the issue is, one, are you misogynistic? That's the first one. Number two, uh, you ha now have your daughter beside you to dissuade, no, I can't be a misogynist because look, I have a daughter. Just so you know, this is type and shadow. Um, this is the gender equivalent of, I can't be racist because I have a black friend. Just so you know, okay? The other issue, twofold. One, he, his absence then gives um, greater, shines greater light on him in that one Queen Letizia of Spain was in the midst, hyping up the crowd, having a good time, wishing everyone well, and even um, sharing great will to the London players. Now add to this, you also have a video of Prince Harry circulating, it was released sometime this weekend, one being present, two being motivational, and three actually seeming to care about the initiative at hand. So now you are being um, pummeled for not being present, two, you're being compared to your brother, and another royal, okay? Now, to add insult to injury with all of this, you have now been um, summoned by your daddy. <laughs> I guess your trauma offensive isn't working, but that's not even the worst part. The worst part is this, going back to this beautiful little girl, Charlotte. Now, I personally believe, if you follow me, that children are off limits because one comment can go left and these children are innocent all of the children are innocent all five grandchildren are innocent in all of this the issue is when he then plops her beside him to try to um assuage his guilt or to try to get out of jail free card by using her she then becomes a prop and the issue is if you're using her for your own greater good yes she is your child but then it's hard for you to then say him people to then say she's a child leave her out of this this is how he used her. So now be ready for others to then use her and the other children because you just said it was okay. You, he just said it was okay. That's what's happening. Now, I would tell you what, there were other ways that this could have been handled short of this, but that whole, you know, masculine whitewashing, it doesn't matter. This is the way we've always done it. That mindset that may have worked in 1750, even 1950, is not going to work in 2023. 
but you keep listening to them because there are several other ways this could have been handled. But again, as I said, I'm not going to tell you how to do it. I'm just going to laugh when you do it wrong. <laughs> exactly. Right now, see, I said I wasn't going to say, but since you've given away secrets, let's go ahead and spell it all out. I personally, if I won, I would have been there. I would have tried to explain to him, you need to be there. But if he was hell bent on not going and double down on it, the next option would have been, if you're going to do a video, would have been number one, decked out in the uniform, right? Sit back and say, we can't be there. We're a football family, as you know. I take um, pride in my position as being the president of the, U the UK Football League. And I'd have the kids in the background with Kate in uniform, with the shirts on, seeing them play football, the boys and the little girl, right? Because then you're not necessarily putting the focus on one child. You're putting the focus on children, vacation, a sport, being a sporting family, right? To your other point, I would have had a photo op. I would have had kids come over. I don't know exactly where they are, but you could have set up some kids to sit back and watch this World Cup, watching it and cheering it on. That's what boys and girls sitting there. That's what I would have done. But again, I would have instructed him, take your hips to Australia. And for people saying there's no, he couldn't win because of the turnaround and carbon footprint, rah, rah, rah. Ain't nobody think about that in that capacity. He brings it up when it's convenient. Let's talk about that footprint when he hops on a helicopter every other day if you want to talk about carbon footprints, right? We're talking about um, pride of country. We're talking about an historic event. Uh, we're talking about being at the helm of not only of the league, but also of the country and being there to show support of your fellow countrymen and women. That's what this was about. And he blundered unnecessarily and took a very hard L. Now, what doesn't need to happen when they return? Don't try to do like the president, uh, how the president does, and they try to welcome people to the White House, you know, to celebrate when they've won. You weren't there. <laughs> no, nah, boy, let, 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 this, let this ride. You can't show up later after the fact. Nah. Take this L and go talk to your daddy. Because he has a family meeting waiting for you. I hate seeing the royal children and William's Lioness's support video is the perfect example of why. Prop, and it's disgusting, and I hate it so much. She doesn't say anything until the end of that video when she like echoes his generic well wishes and good lucks. I can't tell if this child actually likes soccer. I can't tell if this is actually a part of their relationship. If this is a thing that they do together when he is not working. The inauthenticity of it just adds to the fact that she is a prop. It's gross to me to see them come into this world, this human zoo, at such a young age. Those kids should team up with reality show kids and form a union. Okay, it looks like there was one royal that did not mind hopping on a plane and heading down to Australia to cheer on their country's team. Here we have Queen Letizia of Spain and her daughter Infanta Sofia, and they were cheering on Spain for the FIFA's Women's World Cup, where Spain was up against England's team. Queen Letizia was appropriately dressed in red. She was wearing a Hugo Boss suit with a Carolina Herrera bag. And there's also this really cute video online of her and Sofia celebrating with the team that I will post right now. <laughs> Y el trofeo. Y la infanta que es muy apasionada al, al fútbol, de hecho sí. se apuntó a un equipo, yo creo que de hecho está practicándolo, así que estará súper feliz de estar ahí, de poder haber vivido esta historia de fútbol. Ahí el posado histórico también. Con Doña Leticia y Doña Sofía.
We're sorry we can't be there in person. Why, what else are you up to? <laughs> are you busy, William? I've looked at your diary. You've only got one engagement. You go to New York on the 18th of September. Tell you what, if it was the blokes over there, you'd be straight on that plane. Enjoy yourselves. I saw this after England lost the World Cup yesterday and I just thought that this is really insensitive because how can you thank the Spanish for beating colonizers? You don't know that this is colonizer FC versus Los Colonizadores, eh? You've never heard of the Spanish Inquisition? I promise you, go and ask the people of Central and Latin America. Go and ask the people of the Philippines on their opinions of the Spanish. Then come back here and revise your statements. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, hit that notification bell.